Good evening. I am Arachna of the Spider People, your hostess with the mostess. And welcome to Beware Theater, because this Beware, you're going to see some really bad movies. We've got vampires, monsters, werewolves, aliens, and of course, the undead. So take a load off, pull up a couch, and fasten your seatbelt. It's going to be a bumpy night. Tonight we watch zombie movie masterpiece, Night of the Living Dead, co-written and directed by George Romero. This movie gave birth to the modern zombie and the modern horror movie, and filmed in creepy black and white and full of gory surprises, this movie is guaranteed to scare the bejesus out of you. The movie was very successful and had many sequels, and in 1999, it was inducted into the National Film Registry at the Library of Congress. Not bad for a horror movie, huh? Believe it or not, before 1968, there were no movie ratings. No R, no PG, no X. And the kids who innocently walked into this movie were traumatized. So were their parents. They didn't know what hit them. And mainly because of that, after Night of the Living Dead came out, the movie rating system was put in place. Night of the Living Dead are about the dead who rise from their graves and go on a rampage with an insatiable desire to eat human flesh. One night, some people are trapped in a farmhouse by them and spend the rest of the night bickering how to survive. I'll warn you now, this movie is not for those who faint at blood or at cannibalism. So now we watch. Night of the Living Dead. They ought to make the day the time changes, the first day of summer. What? Well, it's 8 o'clock and it's still light. A lot of good the extra daylight does us. Now, we've still got a three-hour drive back. We're not going to be home until after midnight. Well, if it really bugged you, Johnny, you wouldn't do it. You think I want to blow Sunday on a scene like this? You know, I figure we're either going to have to move Mother out here or move the grave into Pittsburgh. Well, she can't make a trip like this. Oh, you know that she can't. Is there any of that candy left? No. Look at this thing. We still remember. I don't. You know, I don't even remember what the man looks like. Johnny, it takes you five minutes. 
yeah, five minutes to put the wreath on the grave and six hours to drive back and forth. Mother wants to remember, so we trot 200 miles into the country and she stays at home. Well, we're here, John, all right? Ladies and hey, gentlemen, Bruce. we're coming back on the air after an interruption due to technical problems. There's nothing wrong with the radio. Must have been the station. Which row is it in? Lost an hour's sleep on the time change. I think you complain just to hear yourself talk. There it is. I wonder what happened to the one from last year. Each year we spend good money on these things. We come out here and the one from last year's gone. Well, the flowers die and the caretaker or somebody takes them away. Yeah, a little spit and polish, you can clean this up. Sell it next year. Wonder how many times we bought the same one. Come on, Barb. Church was this morning, huh? Hey, I mean praying's for church, huh? Come on. I haven't seen you in church lately. <laughs> well... Not much sense in my going to church. Do you remember one time when we were small, we were out here? It was from right over there. I jumped out at you from behind the tree, and Grandpa got all excited, and he shook his fist at me, and he said, Boy, you be damned to hell! <laughs> remember that? Right over there. Well, you used to really be scared here. Johnny. You're still afraid. Stop it now. I mean it. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it. You're ignorant. They're coming for you, Barbara. Stop it. You're acting like a child. Look, they're coming for you. Look, there comes one of them now. He'll hear you. Here he comes now. I'm getting out of here. Johnny.
They're coming for you, Barbara. That's a classic line from this movie, and pretty prophetic, because, well, they were coming for her. And poor nerdy Johnny, he tries to scare her, but she's already scared of the cemetery. Unfortunately, Johnny was the first to die. And if Barbara could have jump-started her car, she could have gotten out of there. So ladies, take those car repair classes. You never know when you're going to need them. And Barbara's day just gets worse and worse. First, her brother dies. Then she wrecks her car. Then she finds a place to hide. But the phone doesn't work, and she finds a half-eaten corpse upstairs. No wonder she's freaking out. You know, people ask me if I'm from Transylvania. No, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh, to be exact. The place where George Romero wrote this movie. He actually filmed it 30 miles away in Evans City. Also from Pittsburgh is Bill Cardill, who plays a TV announcer almost at the end of the movie and was a local Pittsburgh personality. He was called Chili Billy Cardilly, and he hosted Chiller Theater. I watched him every Saturday night. So thank you, Bill, for inspiring me to do this craziness. Him, I can handle them. Probably be a lot more of them as soon as they find out about us. The truck is out of gas. This pump out here is locked. Is there a key? We can try to get out of here if we can get some gas. Is there a key? Do you live here? some other people. Maybe, maybe we better take some food. I'll see if I can find some food. Two of them out there. Have you seen any more around here? I can take I care of those know. two. I well, don't I know, know you're afraid, but we have I to... don't know! I don't know! What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. 
là. Don't look at it. Why don't you see if you can find some wood, some boards, something about the fireplace, something we can nail this place up. Oh, God, that... Look, I know you're afraid. I'm afraid too. But we have to try to board the house up together. Now, I'm going to board up the windows and the doors. Do you understand? We'll be all right here. We'll be all right here until someone comes to rescue us. But we'll have to work together. You'll have to help me. Now, I want you to go in and get some wood so I can board the place up. Do you understand? OK? OK? looks pretty secure. If we have to, we can run in here and board up the doors. Won't be long for those things be back pounding their way in here. They're afraid now. They're afraid of fire. I found that out. Place back down the road called Beatman's, Beatman's Diner.
Anyhow, that's where I found that truck I have out there. There's a radio in the truck. I jumped in to listen to it. When a big gasoline truck came screaming right across the road. But there must have been 10, 15 of those things chasing after it. Grabbing and holding on. Now, I didn't see them at first. I could just see that the truck was moving in a funny way. And those things were catching up to it. The truck went right across the road. I slammed on my brakes to keep from hitting it myself. It went right through the guardrail. I guess, I guess the driver must have cut off the road into that gas station by Beekman's Diner. It went right through the billboard, ripped over a gas pump, and never stopped moving. By now, it's like a moving bonfire. Didn't know if the truck was going to explode or what. Still hear the man screaming. This thing is just backing away from it. I look back at the diner to see if, if there was anyone there who could help me. It was when I noticed that the entire place had been encircled. There wasn't a sign of life left. Except by now there were no more screams. I realized that I was alone with 50 or 60 of those things just standing there staring at me. I, I started to drive. I just plowed right through them. They didn't move, they didn't run, or just stood there, staring at me. Just wanted to crush them. They scattered through the air like bugs. We were riding in the cemetery, Johnny and me. Johnny. We came to put a wreath on my father's grave. Johnny and, and he said, can I have some candy, Barbara? And we didn't have any. And, oh, it's hot in here. said, oh, it's late. Why did we start so late? And I said, Johnny, if you'd gotten up earlier, we wouldn't be late. Johnny asked me if I were afraid. And I said, I'm not afraid, Johnny. And then this man started walking up the road. He came slowly. And Johnny kept teasing me and saying, he's coming to get you, Barbara. And I laughed at him and said, Johnny, stop it. And then Johnny ran away. And I, I went up to this man and I was going to apologize. Why don't you just keep calm? And I looked up and I said, good evening. And he grabbed me. He grabbed me, and he ripped at me. He held me, and he ripped at my clothes. I think you should just calm down. Oh, oh I screamed, Johnny! Johnny, help me! Oh, help me! And he wouldn't let me go. He ripped. And then Johnny came, and he ran, and he, he fought this man. And I got 
so afraid. I ran. I ran. I ran. And Johnny didn't come. We've got to. We have to wait for Johnny. He's out there. Please, don't you hear me? We've got to go out and get him. Please! We have got to go get Johnny! Please help me! Please! Don't you know what's going on out there? This is no Sunday school picnic. Don't you understand? My brother is alone! Your brother is dead. No! My brother is not dead! Unfortunately, Barbara has gone into shock and is less animated than the staggering creatures that are trying to get her. I don't blame Ben for being frustrated at how useless she is. And when Ben punches her out, it doesn't even face Barbara. Well, in the 1960s, seeing a black man punch a white woman faced the audience, but not in a good way. I have to point out here another groundbreaking thing that George Romero did was to cast a black man in the lead role of this movie. Sidney Poitier had done some movies before this, but a black man as a lead in a horror movie? That was unprecedented, especially with all the racial tensions of the time. <laughs> Because of the obvious threat to untold numbers of citizens, and because of the crisis which is even now developing, this radio station will remain on the air, day and night. This station and hundreds of other radio and TV stations throughout this part of the country are pooling their resources through an emergency network hookup to keep you informed of all developments. At this hour, we repeat, these are the facts as we know them. There is an epidemic of mass murder being committed by a virtual army of unidentified assassins. The murders are taking place in villages, cities, rural homes, and suburbs with no apparent pattern or reason for the slayings. It seems to be a sudden, general explosion of mass homicide. We have some descriptions of the assassins. Eyewitnesses say they are ordinary-looking people. Some say they appear to be in a kind of trance. Others describe them as being... So, at this point, there is no really authentic way for us to say who or what to look for and guard yourself against. Misshapen monsters. Reaction of law enforcement officials is one of complete bewilderment at this hour. So far, we have been unable to determine that any kind of organized investigation is yet underway. Police, sheriff deputies, and emergency ambulances are literally deluged with calls for help. And the scene can best be described as mayhem. Mayors of Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and Miami governors of several eastern and midwestern states have indicated the National Guard may be mobilized at any moment, but that has not happened as yet. The only advice our reporters have been able to get from official sources is for private citizens to stay in their homes behind locked doors. Do not venture outside for any reason until the nature of this crisis has been determined and until we can advise what course of action to take. Keep listening to radio and TV for any special instructions as this crisis develops further. Thousands of office and factory workers are being urged to stay at their places of employment, not to make any attempt to get to their homes. However, in spite of this urging and warning, streets and highways are packed with frantic people trying to raise their families or apparently to flee just anywhere. To repeat, the safest course of action at this time is simply to stay where you are.
dispatch just received in our newsroom. Latest word also from National Press Services in Washington, D.C., now tells us that the emergency presidential conference, which we've just mentioned, will include high-ranking scientists from the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. That's the extent of this latest facilities and an emergency network to bring you this news as it develops. We urge you to stay tuned to radio and TV and to stay indoors at all costs. Late reports reaching this newsroom tell of frightened people seeking refuge in churches, schools, and government buildings demanding shelter and protection from the wholesale murder which apparently is engulfing much of the nation. gun and some bullets out there. It was only late yesterday. Oh, and these. When it became clear we were facing some kind of national emergency. When first reports began filtering in. Story. Look, I don't know if you're hearing me. But I'm going upstairs now. It's almost as though some critical balance of... If anything should try to break in here, I can hear it from up there. I'll be down to take care of it. Savage killers. We repeat, this radio station... Everything is all right for now. I'll be back to reinforce the windows and doors later. But you'll be all right for now, okay? Okay. Civil defense officials in Cumberland have told newsmen that murder victims show evidence of having been partially devoured by their murderers. from witnesses to the effect that people who acted as though they were in a kind of trance were killing and eating their victims prompted authorities to examine the bodies of some of the victims. Medical authorities in Cumberland have concluded that in all cases, the killers are eating the flesh of the people they murder. And so this incredible story becomes more ghastly with each report. It's difficult to imagine such a thing actually happening, but these are the reports we have been receiving and passing on to you, reports which have been verified as completely as is possible in this confused situation. It is happening, and it would appear that no one is safe from this wave of mass murder. <laughs> A radio. County, Pennsylvania. The Butler County Sheriff has verified that reports of murder victims being partially eaten by their slayers is true. No further details available at this time. However, my you guys been down there? I could use some help up here. That's the cellar. It's the safest place. You mean you didn't hear the racket we were making up here? How were we supposed to know what was going on? Could have been those things for all we knew. That girl was screaming. Sure, you must know what a girl screaming sounds like. Those things don't make any noise. Anybody would know somebody ever needed help. Look, it's kind of hard to hear what's going on from down there. We thought we could hear screams, but for all we knew, that could have meant those things were in the house afterwards. And you wouldn't come up and help. 
Well, if there were more... The racket sounded like the place was being ripped apart. How were we supposed to know what was going on? Now, wait a minute. You just got finished saying you couldn't hear from down there. Now you say it sounded like the place was being ripped apart. It would be nice if you'd get your story straight, man. All right. Now, you tell me. I'm not going to take that kind of a chance when we got a safe place. We luck into a safe place, and you're telling us we got to risk our lives just because somebody might need help, huh? Yeah, something like that. All right, why don't we settle this, oh, Mister? We came up. Okay, we're here. Now I suggest we all go back downstairs before any of those things find out we're in here. They can't get in here. You got the whole place boarded up? Yeah, most of it. I'll be a few spots upstairs. They won't be hard to fix. You're insane. The cellar's the safest place. I'm telling you, they can't get in here. And I'm telling you, those things turned over our car. We were damn lucky to get away at all. Now you tell me those, those things can't get through this lousy pile of wood? His wife and kids downstairs. The kids hurt. Well, I still think we're better off up here. We could strengthen everything up, Mr. Cooper. With all of us working, we could fix this place up in no time. We have everything we need up here. We can take all that stuff downstairs with us. Man, you're really crazy, you know that? You got a million windows up here. All these windows, you're gonna, you're gonna make them strong enough to keep these things out, huh? I told you, those things don't have any strength. I smashed three of them and pushed another one out the door. Did you hear me when I told you they turned over our car? Oh, hell, any good five men can do that. That's my point. Only there's not going to be five or even ten. There's going to be twenty, thirty, maybe a hundred of those things. And as soon as they know we're here, this place is going to be crawling with them. Well, if they're that many, they'll probably get us wherever we are. Look, the cellar. The cellar, there's only one door, right? Just one door, that's all we have to protect. Tom and I fix it so it locks and boards from the inside. But up here, all these windows, why, we'd never know where they were going to hit us next. You got a point, Mr. Cooper. But down in the cellar, there's no place to run to. I mean, if they did get in, there'd be no back exit. We'd be done for. Uh... We can get out of here if we have to. And we got windows to see what's going on outside. But down there, with no windows, if a rescue party did come, we wouldn't even know it. But the cellar is the strongest place. The cellar is a death trap. I don't know, Mr. Cooper. I think he's right. You know how many's out there? I don't know. I think maybe six or seven. Look, you two can do whatever you like. I'm going back down to the cellar, and you better decide. Because I'm going to board up that door, and I'm not going to unlock it again, no matter what happens. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Cooper. No, I'm not going to wait. I've made my decision. Now, you make yours. Now, wait a minute. Let's think about this. We can make it to the cellar if we have to. And if we do decide to stay down there, we'll need some things from up here. So let's at least consider this a while. If you box yourself in the cellar and those things get in the house, you've had it. At least up here you have a fighting chance. Yeah, it looks like about eight or ten out there now. There's more than there were. There are a lot out back, too. Who knew there were people hiding in the basement? Why didn't they come out before now? If they had, we wouldn't have had to endure Barbara being so boring. And Harry Cooper is such a jerk. He and Ben definitely don't see eye to eye on how to survive this catastrophe. Work it out, guys. The zombies are coming. Good thing Ben finds a shotgun with shells. He's going to need it. Every window and door in this place. 
We've got to get down into the cellar. Go down in your damn cellar. Get out of here! I'm, I'm taking the girl with me. You leave her here. Keep your hands off her. And everything else that's up here, too. Because if I stay up here, I'm fighting for everything up here. And the radio and the food is part of what I'm fighting for. Now, if you're going down the cellar, get. The man's insane. He's insane. We've, we've got to have food down there. We've got a right. This is your house. We've got a right. You going down there with him? Well, I... Yes or no, this is your last chance. No beating around the bush. Well, listen, I got a kid down there. She, she can't possibly, I couldn't bring her up here. She can't possibly take all the racket and those, those things smashing through the windows. Well, you're her father. If you're stupid enough to go die in that trap, that's your business. However, I am not stupid enough to follow you. It is tough for the kid that her old man is so stupid. Now, you get the hell down in the cellar. You can be the boss down there. I'm boss up here. You bastards. You know, I won't open this door again. I mean it. Mr. Cooper, with your help, we can... With my help. Let him go, man. His mind is made up. Just let him go. Wait a minute. Judy, come on up here, honey. You're going to let them get hurt, too, huh? It's all right, honey. Go ahead. it up real good. There, there's lots of places we can run to up here. Mr. Cooper, we'd all be a lot better off if all three of us were working together. Well, we're safe now. It's boarded up tight. What about Tom and Judy? They want to stay up there and let them. There are two other people upstairs, a man and a girl. We heard you screaming. Yeah, but I didn't know who they were, and I wasn't about to take any unnecessary chances. Of course not, Harry. Is she all right? I don't know what it is. She feels warm. Maybe it's shock. Where'd you get the bandage? Some laundry in a basket, I tore a sheet. Let them stay upstairs. Let them. Too many ways those monsters can get in up there. We'll see who's right. We'll see when they come begging me to let them in down here. That's important, isn't it? What? To be right, everybody else to be wrong. What do you mean by that? Does anyone up there know why we're being attacked? <sighs> Whatever it is, it isn't just happening here. It's some kind of mass murder. It's going on everywhere. The radio said to stay inside. Radio? Radio upstairs. I heard a news bulletin. There's a radio upstairs and you boarded us in down here? I know what I'm doing. What did it say? Nothing. Nothing. They don't know anything yet. The there's mass murder everywhere, and, and people are supposed to look for a safe place to hide. Take the boards off that door. We are staying down here, Helen. Harry, that radio is at least some kind of communication. If the authorities know what's happening, well, they'll send people for us, so they'll tell us what to do. How are we going to know what's going on if we lock ourselves in this dungeon? We may not enjoy living together, but dying together isn't going to solve anything. Those people aren't our enemies. Mr. Cooper! Mr. Cooper, Ben found a television set upstairs. Let's go up. Tom? Yeah? If Judy would come downstairs for a few minutes, Harry and I could come upstairs. OK, yeah, right away. Will you do it? Do I have to? Look, honey, nothing's going to get done with them down there and us up here. Do this for me. Okay. 
Okay, open up. Don't be afraid of me. I'm Helen Cooper, Harry's wife. Give me one of those. Her brother was killed. And they talk about these windows. I can't see a damn thing. There could be 15 million of those things out there. That's how much good these windows are. Why don't you do something to help somebody? Here I have it. Drag a couple of those chairs together. There's a socket over here. You better watch this and try to understand what's going on. I don't want anyone's life on my hands. Is there anything I can do to help? I don't want to hear any more from you, mister. If you stay up here, you take orders from me. And that includes leaving the girl alone. There's no sound. Play with the rabbit ears. It, it reports, incredible as they seem, are not the results of mass hysteria. Mass they hysteria. What do they think we're imagining all this? Shut up! In all parts of the country. The wave of murder which is sweeping the eastern third of the nation is being committed by creatures who feast upon the flesh of their victims. This is the latest disclosure in a report from National Civil Defense Headquarters in Washington. It has been established that persons who have recently died have been returning to life and committing acts of murder. A widespread investigation of reports from funeral homes, morgues, and hospitals has concluded that the unburied dead are coming back to life and seeking human victims. Civil defense machinery has been organized to provide rescue stations with food, shelter, medical treatment, and protection by armed National Guardsmen. Stay tuned to the broadcasting stations in your local area for this list of rescue stations. This list will be repeated throughout our news coverage. Look for the name of the rescue station nearest you and make your way to that location as soon as possible. So we have that truck. If we can get some gas, we can get out of here. There's a pump out by the shed. I know that's why I pulled in here, but it's locked. Called this afternoon by the president. Since convening this conference of the presidential cabinet, the FBI, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the CIA, has not produced any public information. Why are space experts being consulted about an earthbound emergency? So far, all the betting on the answer to that question centers on the recent Explorer satellite shot to Venus. That satellite, you'll recall, started back to Earth, but never got here. That's the space vehicle which orbited Venus and then pur was purposely destroyed by NASA when scientists discovered it was carrying a mysterious high-level radiation with it. Could that radiation be somehow responsible for the wholesale murders we're now suffering? It's obvious our best move is to try to get out of here. How are you going to get over to that pump? Look! Uh, you're coming from a meeting regarding the explosion of the Venus probe, is that right? Uh, yes, yes, that was the uh, subject of the meeting. You feel there is a connection between this and the there's phenomenon? A, there's a definite connection, a definite connection. In other words, you feel that the radiation on the Venus probe is enough to call these, cause these mutations? There was a very high degree of radiation. Well, just a minute. Uh, uh, I'm not sure that that's certain at all. I don't but think that has been a uh, irrefutable that we have at this time. In other words, it is the military's viewpoint that the radiation is not the cause of the mutation. I can't speak for the entire military at this time, gentlemen. This seems to I be... must disagree with these gentlemen presently until we, uh, until this is irrefutably proved. Uh, everything is uh, being done that can be done. We'll have to hurry for our next meeting. Uh, uh, 
<laughs> Professor, you feel that there is a definite connection between a definite the... connection as far uh -huh. as Dr. Keller and myself. Doctor, please. I, I thought we decided that is not proof. Yeah. Uh, was, it, not when, was the satellite, uh, when the satellite was, was exploded? an unusual amount of radiation, enough to cause mutation yes, under certain circumstances. Do. Could have uh, happened yeah. to have a bearing on it. It does seem to have a bearing. Yes. Hoping to get some further explanation of this. We've heard all we need to know. We have to try to get out of here. He said the rescue stations have doctors and medical supplies. If we could get Karen there, we could get help for her. Cosmo is one of the world's foremost authorities on space science and technology. Willard. We I saw a sign that said Willard. Moment, so it's only about 17 miles from here. You know this area. You from around here? Judy and I are both from around here. We were on our way up to the lake to go swimming. And Judy had a radio, and we heard the first reports about this. So we knew the old house was here, and we came in and found the lady upstairs dead. Then these other people came. We went down into the basement and put a bar across the door, and it is pretty strong. Dr. Grimes, your entire staff, I know, has been working very hard to find some solution to these things that are happening. Do you have any answers at this time? Yes, we have some answers. Uh, but first, let me stress the importance of seeking medical attention for anyone who's been injured in any way. We don't know yet uh, what complications might result from such injuries. How bad has your kid been hurt? Good advice, Doctor. Now, how about the basic um, problem? Of yeah, you tell Judy to come up here and you stay with the kid, all right? They want you upstairs. Did she ask for me? She had to do anything. I don't understand. Baby. It's Mommy. I heard. I'll come back down as soon as I find out what they want. Thank you, Judy. The body should be disposed of at once, preferably by cremation. Well, how long after death, then, does the body become reactivated? It's only a matter of minutes. Minutes? Well, that doesn't give people time to make any arrangements. Oh, no, you're right. It doesn't give them time to make funeral arrangements. The bodies must be carried to the street and, and, and burned. Uh, they're just dead flesh and dangerous. I see. Judy, I need you to find some bed spreads or sheets to tear up into small strips, OK? Is there a fruit cellar here? Yes. We need some bottles or jars to make Molotov cocktails and hold them off while we try to escape. Hey, there's a big can of kerosene down there. I'll see what I can find. I'll look for the bottles. There's a big key ring down there. There may be a key to the gas pump on it. I'll check. We can toss the cocktails from a window upstairs. In the meantime, a couple of us can go out and try to get the gas and come back for the rest of the people. But that'll leave a door open someplace. Yeah, that's right. It better be this door. It's closer to the truck. Before we go out with some supplies behind the cellar door, while we're gone, the rest of you can hold up in there. I found some fruit jars in the cellar. And there's a key on here that's labeled for the gas pump out back. You're it, then. You and I will go. We'll put whatever lumber we find behind the cellar door. You can go upstairs and toss the cocktails from a window. Tom, you and I will have to unboard this door. After you toss the cocktails, you hustle back down here and lock this door. It's no good to board it up because we'll have to get back in quickly. After we get the gas and get back into the house, then we'll worry about getting everybody into the truck. Now let's move it. Good thing these folks found a TV so it could tell them what kind of trouble they're in. As if they couldn't figure it out themselves. There's zombies in the yard trying to break in and eat them. Hello? And the scientific theory they have. The dead are rising and becoming flesh eaters because of radioactivity from a space probe to Venus. I've heard of far-fetched theories before. But all the way to Venus? That's pretty far. And their escape plan is to throw Molotov cocktails into the yard to disperse the zombies so that Tom and Ben can get to the pump, get gas, drive to a rescue station for medical help. I sure hope that key works in that locked gas pump because Karen's starting to wake up. No, no, Deadly, not that kind of cocktail. The kind you throw. Are you sure we're doing the right thing, Tom? What, about getting out of here? Yeah. Well, the television said that's the right thing to do. We've got to get to a rescue station. I don't know. Come on, honey, you're starting to sound like Mr. Cooper now. But why do you have to go out there? Look, I know how to handle that truck, and I can handle the pump. Ben doesn't know anything about that stuff. 
But we're safe in here. For how long, honey? We're safe now. We've got to do something, and fast. I just don't want you to go out there, that's all. We've got work to do, honey. And you... you... Downstairs. We have to go downstairs now, Barbara. She's right. You have to go downstairs now, just for a little while, until we get back. Then we can all leave. Oh, I'd like to leave. Yes.
drag you out there and feed you those things. <laughs> Too bad that Tom was so clumsy at the gas pump. Or rather, too bad Tom blew up the truck and barbecued them both. That sequence was the first time that an audience had witnessed cannibalism. Yet another reason for the movie rating system. And Harry, why didn't you let Ben in when he was running from those zombies? No wonder he beat the crap out of you. And those entrails and body parts? They were provided by a butcher friend of George Romero's. supposed to be another broadcast at three o'clock. Ten minutes. Oh, only ten more minutes? We don't have very long to wait. We can leave. Well, we better leave soon. It's ten minutes to three. Johnny has the keys. You're gonna carry that child a mile through that army of things out there? I can carry the kid. What's wrong with her? How'd she get hurt? One of those things grabbed her. Bit her on the arm. Monitored closely by scientists at all the radiation detection stations. At this hour, they report the level of the mysterious radiation continues to increase steadily. So long as this situation remains, government spokesmen warn that dead bodies will continue to be transformed into the flesh-eating ghouls. All persons who die during this crisis, from whatever cause, will come back to life to seek human victims unless their bodies are first disposed of by cremation. All law enforcement agencies and the military have been organized to search out and destroy the marauding ghouls. The Survival Command Center at the Pentagon has disclosed that a ghoul can be killed by a shot in the head or a heavy blow to the skull. Officials are quoted as explaining that since the brain of a ghoul has been activated by the radiation, the plan is, kill the brain and you kill the ghoul. Kill the ghoul? Actually, if you've paid attention, you'll notice they never say the Z word in this movie. That's because up until now, zombies in the movies were based on Haitian zombies who were controlled by voodoo masters and they never ate anybody. However, George Romero created a monster that was a combination of zombies, werewolves, and vampires. They staggered like zombies, they ate like werewolves, and when they bit their victims, they transferred their disease like vampires. One stop shopping. Why are you thinking from the supply wagon, Cuz? Uh, no, we're all right. Hey, Cass, put that thing all the way in the fire. We don't want it getting up again. All right, I got you. Chief, Chief McClellan. Yeah, okay. Chief, uh, if I were surrounded by six or eight of these things, would I stand a chance with them? Well, there's no problem. If you had a gun, shoot them in the head. That's a sure way to kill them. If you don't get yourself a club or a torch, beat them or burn them, they go up pretty easy. 
Well, Chief McClellan, how long do you think it will take you until you get the situation under control? Well, that's pretty hard to say. We don't know how many of them there are. We know when we find them, we can kill them. Are they slow moving, Chief? Yeah, they're dead. They're all messed up. Well, uh, in time, would you say you ought to be able to wrap this up in 24 hours? Well, we don't really know. We know we'll be into it most of the night, probably into the early morning. We're working our way toward Willard, and we'll team up with the National Guard over there, and then we'll be able to give a more definite view. Thank you very much, Chief McClellan. This is Bill Cardill, WIC TV 11 News. As long as the heavy rain... Is the fuse box in the cellar? I don't know. I... It isn't the fuse. The power lines are down. Helen, I have to get that gun. Haven't you had enough? What? Two people are dead already on account of that guy. Take a look out that window. Get... intense deadly well I know it was just a matter of time before Ben lost his patience with Harry but he shot him maybe to shut him up 
Can't say I blame him at this point in the movie. And just when you thought you couldn't be grossed out anymore, the Cooper's daughter, Karen, does things to them that's a real no-no. I suppose if they had survived, they would have grounded her forever, or at least taught her to eat with a knife and fork on a plate. I have to say, I for one, am never going to look at a masonry trowel again the same way. get about four or five men and a couple dogs. There's a house over here behind those trees. We want to go check it out. Frank, you stay here, Bill. Yeah, Chief. We're going to stay with it till we meet up with the National Guard. Where'd you get the coffee? One of the volunteers. You're doing all the work. You take it. Thank you. We should be wrapped up here about three or four more hours. We'll probably get into Willard then. I guess you can go over there and meet the National Guard. Nick, you and the rest of these men want to come with me? Well, Bill, I'm checking the office, see what's happening. All right, Steve. Tell them we're going to stay with it and... Uh... Everything appears to be under control.
right by the barn. Down. I only need a few men to check out the house. Somebody had a cook out here, Vince. Yeah, it sure looks like it, Cop. Drag that out of here and throw it on the fire. Nothing down here? All right, go ahead down and give him a hand. Let's go check out the house. Man. There's something there. I heard a noise. All right, Vince, hit him in the head, right between the eyes. Good shot. OK, he's dead. Let's go get him. That's another one for the fire. There you have it, a movie that shocked an entire generation, created a brand new horror movie genre, and a whole new industry on fake blood, and was as scary as it gets. This movie teach me that sometimes the basement really is the safest place to be, unless of course there's a flood and then no. It also teach me if you manage to survive a zombie attack, you had better stay away from the local yokel gun-toting zombie-killing posse or they might get you. So until next time, or not, this is Arachna of the Spider People wishing you nighty night and don't let any zombies bite or you'll become one of them, you know.
Okay, Deadly, here I come. Movie's over. You know what that means. Hope you're ready for me, big guy. It's time to clean up. You know, the only thing I don't like about hosting these old horror movies is the cleanup. And this one was a real messy movie. And Deadly, don't forget to burn those bodies real good so they don't come back and get us. I'm going to save a few harmless mementos for my collection. Let's see. I have a brain, and a hand, and a foot. Oh, I see you, Deadly, hiding back there pretending to be a zombie. You don't fool me. And stop poking me. Wait a minute. If you're there, whose hands are these? Ah, a zombie! <laughs> <laughs>